I just bought the most broken iPhone 13 I could find on eBay, and in today's video I'm going to be showing you some secret repair tips that can help you turn broken phones from this into perfect phones like this. This phone is not in good condition. The seller states that the power button is not working, so he can't fully test it. And the person that he bought it from said he broke it on his bicycle. <laughs> this is our first look at the iPhone 13. You can actually see the internals of the phone from the outside. The camera lens is scratched and the glass is broken. The glass on the screen is so cracked, I don't know if I can refurbish it. Luckily for us, it does take a charge. Ugh, this repair is going to be harder than I thought. But will we find any hidden problems on the way? I guess we'll have to find out. Let's start by heating the screen to 77 degrees, removing the two pentalo screws at the bottom of the phone. After this, we can use a razor blade and some alcohol to loosen the adhesive of the screen. Using the technique of rocking the blade back and forth, we can create a small opening. This leaves us with a gap just big enough to fit in a plastic guitar pick. We can then slide this pick around to release the screen from the housing. We now get our first look inside the phone, but what's all this white powder? Remove these three screws and this shield. And this one. Disconnect the battery, the display, the proximity sensor. On first glance, things are looking okay. Let's start by freeing the logic board. This flex is broken. Let's remove more connectors like little Legos. The Taptic engine is what makes the phone vibrate. Remove the SIM card tray. Then we can remove six more screws. Next we can remove the camera shield, which then allows us access to remove the camera itself. We may repair this lens in a different video. Apple's playing hide and seek with us with these screws, but we found them. We can now remove the logic board from the housing of the phone. Considering how badly damaged this phone was, this logic board looks to be in good condition. Unlike in the US, here in the UK, we still have a physical SIM and an eSIM. On the iPhone 13 and up, the earpiece speaker is no longer on the back of the screen. True depth camera. This broken cable is why the power button wouldn't work. Because of the condition of the phone, I want to check that the true depth camera works correctly. We can do this using this tester. And lucky for us, it's passed. Now we can finally remove the battery. A bit of alcohol and this battery will come straight out. Now we need to swap the main components back into this new housing. This housing comes with most of the small components needed. First, let's protect the camera lenses from anything that might scratch it from my bench. I want this repair to be as professional as possible, so I clean every component before putting it back inside the phone. This is another iPhone 13 camera that I had from a device that I just could not repair. Luckily it's fully tested, but it does need a clean. The lenses of these cameras are so delicate. You've got to be extremely careful when cleaning the lens. With the release of iOS 18, it now allows us to calibrate some replacement parts such as the camera. Previous to this, the iPhone would say that it cannot determine if this was a genuine part, even though Apple could tell that it was. Now we can put the battery back in along with the screen to test to make sure that everything's working as it should. If the power button's working, we should be able to turn on the device. And we can.
Because the phone is locked, we have to first press up, then down, then press and hold the power button until the phone boots into recovery mode. From here, we can then start to flash the device. The software for this is called 3U Tools. First, I'm going to click the firmware, then click flash. So I've just come back and flashing has failed, which is not a good sign. Now I'm trying a different method. Using JCID's repair tool, we can now try repairing the battery health instead. This flashes the phone again, but hopefully it won't get stuck at 20%. JCID's flash method worked, but now there's an even bigger problem. The Wi-Fi appears to be broken, so we can't set up the device. Before I start working on the LogiPod repair to fix the Wi-Fi issue, I'm going to first focus on refurbishing this display. Here's a little repair secret. By replacing just the glass in the house, it can save a lot of money compared to swapping out the entire display. As you can see, this one's quite smashed, so it could end in disaster, but if I pull it off, it's going to be a huge win. So let's see how it goes. First, let's remove the screws that allows us to remove the bracket. Then we can use a metal pry tool, some heat and alcohol to remove the proximity flex. I'm going to give the screen a bit of a clean here because some of the adhesive was left behind. I was using the spinning tool and some alcohol and a cloth to do this. Because the screen is so badly damaged, we need to prep the screen. I'm using Captain Tape to do this and using a razor blade to remove any excess. Now that the screen has been prepped, we can insert our cutting wire into the bottom left of the screen. The wire is cutting between the glass and the OLED panel. This is very difficult because of the amount of shards of glass. Using alcohol and small tweezers, we can easily remove the earpiece mesh. Most of the glass has been removed, but you can still see there's a little bit left in the top right corner. It's always a good idea to check the display is still working at each part of the refurbished process. As you can see at first inspection, it appears to be okay. I always think that the glass looks pretty cool when you've removed it. Removing the frame is the correct way to refurbish the display because it allows us to properly glue the new frame back on later in the repair. Without it, the frame is no longer glued to the screen and makes for a lower quality repair. This can lead the screen falling off the customer's phone and can cause damage in the process. I'm using the spinning tool again to remove any excess glue that's come from the frame. We want to make sure that the edge of the screen is as clean as possible. This is because we're going to be re-gluing a new frame later on. To remove the glue, I'm going to be using delimonene. This paired with heat softens the adhesive so we can roll it off using our fingers. This is one of the safer options of removing the glue from the display. You can also use the spinning rod tool. However, sometimes you can scratch the polarizer layer. If you're enjoying the content like this, hit the like button and I will try to make more videos like this in the future. At this point, I notice a scratch on the polarizer layer. At first, I thought it was some glue, so I tried to clean it, but I quickly realized it was a scratch. So I thought I would just use the spinning tool instead and continue removing the glue using the spinning rod. After most of the glue has been removed, we can use alcohol and this cleaning cloth to ensure that we get rid of 90% of the glue that's left behind on the screen. At this point, I connect it back to the phone to test that the display is working. On first glance, it looks like everything's fine. The scratch shows up quite clearly. Now into the cleaning room with the green light. The green light shows any particles and glue and dust that we can't see under natural light. Now the display is clean, we can put it into the laminating mold. To try and hide the scratch as much as possible, I'm using LOCA. LOCA stands for Liquid Optically Clear Adhesive, and this should help hide the scratch. All that's left to do now is to put the new glass on and laminate. This is the 12.9 inch YMJ machine. After lamination, we have to check that there's no bubbles. As we can see, there is actually a couple of bubbles, so next we need to put it into the bubble machine. 
This removes any excess bubbles that we may have on the display. After about four minutes, the bubble should be removed. So we press stop. This then decompresses the chamber and we can remove the display to check our results. The results look good. Now we're prepping the screen using some 3M primer. This just allows the new frame to stick even better. Because the gluing area is so thin on the frames, we need to use this machine. We align the frame into the machine's mold. Next, we need to calibrate the start point of the machine. We need to dispense some glue to make sure that it's running smoothly. Then we press start. The machine does its thing and adds glue to the outside of the frame. Now the glue has been applied, we can stick the frame to the display. Next we want to ensure a perfect alignment. Then it goes back into the mold to be pressed. Previously, it took about eight hours for the glue to dry using the cold press glue. Now I'm using the AB glue. It takes five minutes and then the screen is ready to be put back inside the phone. As you can see, the machine has done a fantastic job and there's no gaps between the frame and the glass. Unfortunately, because the screen was so badly damaged, we actually have found that we've got two tiny little black dots. This means I can no longer sell the phone as grade A, so we're going to be swapping the screen out anyway. Now I'm going to copy the MTSN and True Tone from the old display to the new one. This ensures that we keep the auto brightness functionality. However, we will have the pop-up notification saying, can I verify this is a genuine display? even when we do use a refurbished display like this one. Because the proximity flex is paired to the display, Apple cannot calibrate this display once the screen has been swapped without the matching proximity sensor. Before we start the logic board repair, we first have to remove these stickers, otherwise they will melt when we split the board. This preheater is used in order to separate the top and the bottom layers. A lot of the time Wi-Fi issues are caused by the top and the bottom board becoming separated. This can rip the metal pads from the board, so at this stage I'm looking to see if I can see any obviously damaged pads. There is still a chance that the pads are damaged under the solder. To make it easier to see, we remove the old solder from both the sides of the logic board. We do this by adding low melt solder to the original solder. This lowers the melting point and makes it easier for us to remove. Now that the bottom board has had all of the original solder removed, it's time to do the same thing to the top board. Adding low melt solder and plenty of flux make this job much easier. Cleaning the flux residue is done by using a Q-tip and more alcohol. We need to replace the solder that we just removed. The process for this is called reballing. This particular tool is made by Quan Li and allows us to add solder paste to a stencil so that the paste goes in all the correct places. Now that the stencil has been removed, we can use hot air to melt the solder paste into perfect little solder balls. To make sure the solder melts evenly, we apply a fresh layer of flux over the new solder balls. This helps them reflow properly when the board goes back on the heat plate, allowing for a clean and reliable connection. With Wi-Fi now working, the phone still wouldn't activate. After some troubleshooting, I traced it to a baseband issue. I didn't record this part, but I did take photos of the process. I removed the shield covering the baseband, desoldered the chip, cleaned the area and reballed it. After reinstalling the chip and reassembling the board, the issue was resolved allowing me to set up the device successfully. Since we replaced both the camera and the screen, the phone displays these messages. 
Fortunately, the camera can be recalibrated to remove the warning. However, because the proximity sensor is paired with the original screen, the phone won't recognize the screen as genuine, even though it actually is. Now that the logic board looks more presentable, it's time to put it all back together again. We want the phone to work and look as good as new, so that means we need a new battery. We are disassembling the battery to remove the BMS, also known as the battery management system. We remove the BMS using ceramic scissors. I then remove the excess nickel and aluminium from the BMS. We do this to ensure a clean surface for spot welding. This allows the BMS to bond securely to the new cell, preventing any weak connections or potential failures. This is the new cell. As you can see, it does not have a BMS applied already. This tool is called the Quanli Macron Max. It's a spot welder. I'll put the link in the description. I've used a few spot welders and this has been the best one by far. Right now I'm spot welding the BMS to the new battery cell and then we cut it again using the ceramic scissors. When you buy iPhone batteries with no BMS, they tend to come with a protective shield and the battery tape that you need to make the repair look professional. With the release of iOS 18.1, there's now no need to do this repair anymore really, because you can see the battery health. However, I've still got lots of these batteries in stock, so I'm doing this type of repair. Next, we use a thing called a Tag on Flex. This allows the phone to read the battery at 100%. Contradictory to what some people may claim, in my experience, using a tag on flex does not freeze the cycle count to zero. The phone continues to track battery cycles as normal, and then, over time, the count increases, providing an accurate battery health reading. If you're looking for a more in-depth guide on resetting battery health to 100%, check out my other video. This method works up to the latest iOS version 18.3. Because the battery is still showing 83%, we need to flash the device, we download the latest firmware from 3U Tools, and then we head over to JCID's Repair Assistant to do the battery flashing. At this stage you can either disconnect the battery or put the phone into recovery mode by pressing up, down, and then pressing and holding the power button until recovery mode is activated. The flashing is now complete and the battery health should be at 100% when we set up the device again. We're using iOS 18.3 for this video, and as you can see, the flashing has completed perfectly. The battery health is now at 100%. Now we can prepare the battery for installation into the housing again. To make the device as close to factory as possible, I remove the old water resistant glue and apply new one. These stickers transfer a fresh layer of adhesive to the frame, ensuring a proper seal to keep everything as close to factory standards as I can. If you made it this far into the video and you found it interesting, I'd really appreciate it if you could tap the like button and leave a comment. This video took such a long time to make and I ran into a lot of unexpected issues, some of which I wasn't even sure I'd be able to solve. Repairing phones is not my full-time job. I'm a designer by day, but I've been repairing phones for nearly six years as a second job. So if you're still watching, thanks for sticking around. Until next time, take care and I will catch you in the next video.